Hello guys, this is me, Joseph, giving you the beginning commentary of DC formation. As you see now, we see the pink, lovely DC standing up. Hello everyone, welcome. Thanks for coming. So I'm going to hand it over to Lauren here real quick. Okay. Oh, really? So excited to have an occasion like this. I'm, I'm so glad that everybody is here because all of you contributed to what we do, can do tonight. So, first of all, I'll have Ron uh, Daggett come up and help us know not only the prayer for the night, but also the scriptural basis of what we're doing. Good evening. What a privilege it is to gather together for this purpose. We, we are gathered here this evening in reverent and celebratory assembly, solemnly and publicly ordained, that is to set apart our dear friend and brother David Chad Swenson to the gospel ministry. And while there is recognition and certain standing gained with civil authority, and even gifting for leadership imparted with the laying on of hands by the eldership, we essentially regard this ordination as a ceremony to primarily be an acknowledgement of ministry already being practiced. We aren't starting David on a new course, David Chad on a new course. We're acknowledging the course he's already on. And with regard to the requirements for such an ordination, the Apostle Paul writes thusly to Timothy, here is a trustworthy saying. Whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Now the overseer is to be above reproach, if married, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own, affair, <coughs> own affairs well. <coughs> and, <coughs> and if he has children, he is to see that they obey him. And he must do all of this in a manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own affairs, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders, so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Complicated but very certain boundaries for those who are called to this ministry. And as one who has walked with David Chad now for a couple of years, I can attest to the fact that I've seen him walk in this manner. And so it's without reservation I am able to join in this ceremony tonight. So with that, I'd like to return the lectern to. In recognizing what um, David Chad has, has been doing, I think it's important that the people that have been closest to him, the ones that have received from him, all give a public testimony of these things. So that when we then come to David and ask him to help us understand the call that has been on his life, then we can say, this is, we are acknowledging what God has already ordained. 
So we like to be in with um, members of his own family to testify what they have seen in David from earlier times than we know. So if you'd come next. <clears throat> Um, I'm David Chad's father, and um, going back a long way, uh, he's always uh, walked kind of differently, his own way, and I didn't understand, you know, what was driving him and where he was going with this, but in, I guess, uh, out of high school maybe, um, I saw him start to move in a direction closer to God. And, and he seemed to pick up steam as he went along, if you will. He started with the university uh, at Eastern and then again some at Oakland. He got into um, small group and small group leadership and that's kind of where he decided he wanted to be. And he has done a phenomenal job with this. When it came time for him to move out on his own, he didn't just go off to an apartment or to a, a house on his own like you would expect a typical kid his age to do at that time. No, no, that wasn't the way he wanted to do it. He went and found a place where he could start what he called Disciple House. And he took in students, he took in um, people that want to start following in the path. And he wanted to help them along that path. And I've witnessed that, and I've seen that. So I'm, uh, you know, able to attest to that as, as a large fact of what he's done. Um, and I'm not gonna stand up here for a real long time, but lastly, he has had a, uh, a tremendous impact on my life in the direction that I go. Now, I'm not non-denominational, I'm Catholic, but he has kind of shown me the way that I can do better in my faith. So if there's a, if there's a, you know, kind of a judgment that you want to make on that, he is influencing my direction as well. So I am, I am very impressed and, and really glad to be able to attest to this and to see this come to him is very deserving of it. So I am uh, just seeing all the people here tonight, I can see the influence that he has had and is having and continuing to have throughout communities. So I see a lot of nods too. So. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say, so I appreciate it, thank you. So it's all, besides of this, this history, do you want to say something also? It's mother? Okay. Very good. So these are such important things for us to have public somewhere. Thank you. I do definitely want to welcome all of you for being here and being a part of David Chad's uh, journey, which is being ordained and couldn't be more proud of that right now. Now, I'm, I ditto everything Bill said. He couldn't have hit it more right on. So it was part of my speech is ditto Bill. <laughs> but uh, I do want to thank each and every one, like I said, for being a part of this organization. Never would I have dreamed that he would have done with his life what he is doing now. His whole appearance when he walked into a room has changed. He has a passion for what he does. David Chad has a gift for what he is doing unbelievably. I couldn't be more proud of him today. His knowledge of the Bible is amazing. When he has come over and worked with me, I realized that God has blessed him with knowing what part of the Bible to apply what I need to hear. He loves what he does and it shows. He is excited to see that the spirit of unity is alive in the body of Christ at the Open University. He facilitates many topics in his ministry at OU. He truly exhibits passion in all that this person encompasses regarding his ministry at OU. Now, that was a tongue <laughs> Okay, the leadership he embodies has grown by leaps and bounds. The relationship he has with Christ is beautiful. He continues to develop this relationship he has with him.
impressed with the, with the way that God connects people together. Um, sometimes we just have no idea that it's happening, and we don't know from the first moment how we're going to be involved with another person. I was very pleased to meet David Chad because of Cam. Um, Cam had an influence on, on David Chad's life, and um, Cam being a connector, um, <coughs> it was uh, some years ago when we were connected, and then uh, that was a, such a privilege to watch the growth after that. So I think Cam can give us um, an insight on the early part of this journey.
first minute that I met DC, he was interested in my spiritual life and my spiritual journey and where Jesus was leading me. And I think that's something that we can all attest to. That is what DC cares about. And that's, that's, that's something that I absolutely love about him. Uh, I find myself uh, sometimes in a different place. Working with him has been very convicting at times uh, because I find him so much more interested <laughs> uh, in people. I'm like, oh, let's, let's do this thing together or let's, let's get to this next, next place and do this next thing. Meanwhile, DC is wondering, hey, how's that person doing? I wonder, wonder what's going on. Why don't, why don't we pray for them? Oh yeah, DC, we should probably do that, shouldn't we? Uh, <laughs> now, our ministry together has been, has been incredible, but again, this, I brought up that, that initial passage of scripture, Romans 5, 3 through 5. DC's ministry, especially the ministry in which uh, he's really being ordained this evening, was, was formed in the crucible of some really difficult trials. So, within that first 20 minute car ride, uh, he determined that he was interested in, in joining this, this new ministry endeavor at Oakland University. We made plans to talk about it some more. Uh, he was interested potentially even doing it full time, which I found amazing. <laughs> you know, I've only had him met him 20 minutes previous, uh, that he would want to even talk more about this. And as we continued to progress, uh, and as he became more serious, his health uh, began to decline rapidly. Pretty soon, he was getting to the point where he was ready to turn in an application for full-time ministry staff, at the same time, uh, losing weight, uh, having, having intense stomach problems. And these problems went on for, for a while. And they, didn't, they weren't getting better. They were getting worse. And so I meet DC in about July of 2013. He's interested. He's, he's doing everything he can to hang in. But in July, or basically summer of, I think it was summer of 2014, I was in a hospital room with DC as he'd just come out of surgery. Um, you, know, he, he, you know, he's six foot two. At this point, he's about 110 pounds. Uh, they just removed parts of his of, of his stomach because they were they were so damaged, and I'm looking at this guy like, man, I, I just don't know if uh, if this is the path for this guy. I, I, I don't know, and it, it was painful to be thinking those thoughts because I knew his passion, I knew his passion. But I have family members who suffer from, from, from the same debilitating illnesses uh, that TC has gone through. And I just know what the kind of toll it's taken on them. And I just thought, I don't know. And uh, I think I lacked faith. Thankfully, DC didn't. Because he continued to persevere and continued to persevere and continued to persevere through every setback that he had. To the point now where, I mean, the, the, the turnaround to me, I, I've gotten to witness it up close. There's, there, there's a few of us in here who have, who, have been, who have been privileged to see this journey. This journey from, from where he began four and five years ago to where he is now. Uh, fr from a point of saying, being in this hospital room, I'm wondering, I don't know if this guy's even going to be able to to be on his feet very much. And I don't know how much, how, how much that's going to happen throughout the rest of his life. To someone who, uh, who's even challenging his roommates right now, because I, <laughs> I hear about it, where DC's out uh, trying to form relationships with, with students, people who don't know Christ, till 1, 2, 4 in the morning. <laughs> Some of his roommates are like, dude, why are you coming in so late? <laughs> but I know. I know who he is, and I know what he's about, and I know what he's doing. He's out there building these kinds of relationships that DC builds. These deep, powerful friendships where he has tremendous influence and the love of God can transfer. The deep, deep love of God that he has can transfer to them. And I've seen it over and over and over again. This last year especially, 
this last year especially, man, has just been so special, so incredibly special to see. It was last fall that I began to sense a prompting from the Holy Spirit, uh, one that I wanted to shut aside uh, to, to pursue some, some new opportunities uh, that would take me a little bit further away from Oakland University's campus. And for any of you who know me, you know I love Oakland University uh, just as much as I, <laughs> as I love about any place, really any people in the whole world, the students of Oakland University. And I don't think if DC hadn't been there and we hadn't been walking shoulder to shoulder through so many different trials, not only working together, but building that trust between the two of us, that I could have, that, that I would have acted in faith to go out and go where Jesus was calling me to go. Because I don't think I would have left. I don't think I would have had the faith. But watching DC, watching him take the reins, take the mantle, take the responsibility, take the good, take the bad, and invest everything that he has. And when I say everything he has, I mean this man has invested everything he has, everything he owns into growing and advancing God's kingdom. He's different. Some of the things that, that he has gone through, some of, some of the, the months where he's looked at his bank account, they would scare people. <laughs> they would frighten people. People would say, I couldn't do that. I'll never go through that. And there's DC just steady as ever. Yeah. This is a little bit difficult right now, but I know God's going to provide. I know this call on my life. I've watched, I've watched so many different circumstances. I've watched Satan try to knock this guy out. And he continues to persevere and persevere and persevere and persevere. These last six months have been just utterly brilliant to watch. Moved into the, the discipleship house. Uh, there was nobody in it <laughs> to, to really start. Uh, he, was, he was working on that, finding whoever he could. Now he's got, I don't think he's got more people, he's got bedrooms uh, <laughs> in, this, in this community, learning and, and, and seeking after Christ. And it's, it's so exciting to me to see how God has grown D.C., how he's grown his, his spiritual leadership, his spiritual authority, and how this is just the beginning. That's, I think, the most exciting thing to me. This really is still just the beginning of the marvelous, marvelous plan and works that God has planned through D.C. And I, for one, am so very excited to, to see it, to watch it, to see it come into further fruition. And I am so honored to be here right now as as part of a team of people that is affirming who you are and who you've become in Jesus. So I love you so much, man, and I, I couldn't have asked for a better partner. I didn't expect it, but I really couldn't have asked for a better partner the last, the last five years. It's been a total joy working with you. So thank you. Thank you for your amazing service, and uh, yeah, I don't know. With these kind of things, I'm always like, yeah, give it up for DC. <laughs> <laughs>
he was late. So he came in late, and I was like, I was meeting him for the first time. We were talking about some ministry opportunities. And he came in, and I was like, oh, this guy's late, da 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 you know. And he said, I just got a ticket. I was like, you got a ticket? So he got a traffic ticket on the way to our meeting. And he sits down, and someone at Ramsborn comes over to him and starts talking to DC. And DC starts talking to this guy. And in my mind, I'm like, what's happening here? He was late for our meeting, now he's talking to somebody. But what I observed when DC was talking to this person um, at Ramshorn was genuine love, care, and he wanted to know about this person. And I thought, this is a guy I'm going to serve with. From that, and it was only like a three minute little interchange, but I thought, this is the guy I'm going to serve with. So, um, a couple verses I want to affirm you with. Um, Proverbs 17, 17, which I think speaks, speaks of you. It says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. And DC, you know I look at you like a brother. Um, one of the cool things DC and I got to experience a couple years ago, it was about a year and a half ago, we went to Chicago on a mission trip. And when we're in Chicago, we get out of the car, and the very first thing that happens when we get out of the car, we're walking across the street in downtown Chicago, and DC gets hit by a car. <laughs> like, uh, so I'm leading this trip. Three minutes in, DC gets out, and he's hit by a car, and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but he like rolled off of it, and it was fine. <laughs> like, he literally got hit and just rolled like that. And I was like, oh, oh. He, that's exactly what he did. And I was like, come on. Uh, so uh, we checked on him, and he was fine. Of course, his mom and dad, he was fine. <laughs> but he was fine. Um, but what was cool to see while he was there, um, while we're serving, because on a mission trip, you're living together for X amount of days. So we're living together. It's cool to see Jesus through D.C. There was even a point where we got chased, yelled by a homeless person down the street, he and I, um, in downtown Chicago. And it was, it was cool because just seeing Jesus radiating through DC's life and realizing that he loves people. He truly does love people. But in the Christian community, when a person is going through a difficulty, sometimes we shy away from that person. What I love about DC is he does not shy away. He draws near. And, and that's, that's uncommon. Another verse. Um, 1 Peter 4, verse 8. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. When I first met D.C., one of the things that I loved was hearing his story and how what Jesus did in his heart and how he loves and he forgives and he keeps going and keeps walking with Jesus. And it's a, it's a powerful testimony um, to those who DC ministers to and, and, and interacts with. So um, DC, I want to affirm you. I, I believe God has called you. He's ordained you. The Holy Spirit has empowered you for gospel ministry. And right now we're looking at a young man who's going to change the world. So thank you. Now we could go for many hours, right? But one says that uh, DC has influence, so we're going to to hear from them because it's a different thing to be ministered to by a person and receive Jesus through them. So come. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Ryan. I was a uh, DC's roommate for a few years. Uh, we were in the student apartments with a couple other guys from Oakland University, and uh, DC just kind of crashed on our couch for a year <laughs> in the apartments. <laughs> it was interesting. Um, I met him through one of my other roommates. He was part of InterVarsity. Uh, I later joined InterVarsity as well. That's when I first met DC. And we decided to have her, Jake, who was my other roommate, decided to have a small group because he was a leader. And since DC pretty much lived with us, he would frequently, you know, join our small group. And for people like me who don't really know scripture that well, when we would do the small group and talk about a certain passage, he would break it down in a way that is easy to understand. And I'm going to take
takes a certain kind of person to break it down to where somebody who's unfamiliar with you know how things are worded to really understand it. So I was impressed with that. But uh, even more so is when he would talk to people outside of small groups or anything that was church related. Uh, because when we were in our apartment, we would have an open door policy as long as we were awake. And um, so we would have all kinds of friends and people come through our apartment. Um, and they would actively seek out DC and be like, DC, you know, I'm going through some stuff. I need to talk to you. Or DC, I need some advice. And um, I knew a good, a fair amount of people that would seek the advice, the uh, advice too. So I would be present as DC was talking through with the people that sought his advice, and he would. If it fit what he was trying to say to him, say to the person that wanted his help, uh, he would do a scripture or a passage that would fit what they needed to hear. And so I got to hear that and kind of see how it fit to the problem that they were trying to um, solve. And he would if the talk was serious enough, if it was a, you know, a life-changing decision or something um, bad was going on, he would always close um, the discussion with prayer, and he would pray, pray for them, and he would always listen, and he would be selfless. He would never say, oh yeah, I'm having those same problems too. No, he would, it would be all about that person and nothing else, you know, but them. And, um, so I think seeing all the people that would come through with all these different problems, he would always have some sort of answer. He would calm their hearts, and it takes a special kind of person to really, you know, do that. Like there's no effort at all. You know, it's just amazing. And um, one of the things I wanted to close with was uh, one of my own personal beliefs. Um, someone can be spiritual, or they can know the Bible backwards and forwards, but it'll fall on deaf ears if the person that's saying these words doesn't have respect from the people listening to it. And DC has, at least for me, has earned deepest respects, and I think that's important for a leader, you know, to guide people spiritually, is to have respect, and they will listen a person like DC, and I'm glad to have come here and to have said these words, and I'm glad that he's reached the point where he's at right now. So. I'm sure we all have things to say and hopefully have a chance to say them, but now we'll hear from David Shedd about when he really feels or felt the call of God on his life and what that means to him now. So, David, come in. So, yeah, um, it's kind of been a journey with it. Uh, I went from absolutely denying and not believing in God to going through a car accident where I wasn't, I didn't think I should have walked away, let alone be alive and thinking, okay, there's got to be a God, and he has me alive for a reason. Uh, so I wanted to know what that purpose was. And then years later, um, through my brother introducing me to inner varsity, I started to realize that God was Jesus. And I wanted to draw closer and closer and get to know what that purpose was that he had me alive for. And so the more I did that, the more I spent time in that group, the more I grew with my brother, and well, my brothers, Brian as well, um, just, we grew really close, and we grew close to the Lord. And the more I did that, the more I realized God <coughs> had something special for me in campus ministry. He was calling me to it. There was something special about it, and there was something about the way he made me that, that was perfect for the, the campus environment. Um, 
just engaging with people with a wide variety of beliefs, um, a wide variety of opinions, uh, and just, yeah, backgrounds. Um, even people who might be opposed to to me if they knew who I was, if they knew I was a Christian, talking to them. Um, but yeah, I just, I sense that calling um, from that time, you know. And I think especially when I went to Chapter Focus Week, um, was kind of a week-long retreat that university had, and I felt God speaking to me powerfully uh, through, through my time there. I was still kind of torn, still kind of struggling with the direction of my life, and I knew he had me called to, to full-time campus ministry. I also knew that meant support raising, and I was scared of that, so I pushed it away for a long time and wanted to try and build up a bank account, and uh, um, that didn't quite work out the way I thought it would. Um, I ended up meeting Cam at that point, <laughs> and I knew uh, just God kept opening door after door um, that led me there, and I kept stepping through it, and I knew the time was right. Um, so that's when I really made that choice five years ago to say, all right, now's the time um, for that. And I've really, as I've been in this season with Cam and growing in that, I've realized more specifically what it is uh, a pastoral calling to teach, to shepherd, to guide people spiritually and listen to them and care for them. Um, and so, yeah, I think that extends even beyond here into um, kind of a teaching ministry, a pastoral ministry. I think it's, it's what has me here in this place as well, what I get to do with the middle school, high school students here and James, um, and that I'm just so thankful for. Um, yeah, so that's been the calling for me. To, to continue on this whole journey, uh, we have the, um, the Master's Christian Ministries, uh, which is a church, and we have the uh, ability to ordain, which means not that we're beginning a journey, but we're accelerating the journey, and we want you to lay hands on him. The laying on of hands is a blessing that we can bestow, that we have received, and as we do that, we will invite others to come and lay hands on him as well and to, to receive whatever God gives us to uh, let this come, come in force into uh, David's head so that he can go on. This doesn't mean that we're sending him away. We're really drawing him more and more close. And so everybody feels like if they were his best friend, and that's true, that we are. So, um, we'll have him sit here, and we'll bring a chair over. Would you like him? It's over there. And then we'll we'll um, uh, we'll lay hands on him, and and uh, believe that God will give us some prophetic words for David Shad for his, his journey as we go on. And we'll give him a certificate of ordination, and that allows him a number of things. One. Um, he can receive uh, a, a, a way that he can be welcomed into uh, hospitals, um, and he can be welcomed into pris prisons for ministry, and he can marry, and he can be involved in burying all the things that we, we um, uh, assign to people that have a pastoral ministry. This doesn't set him apart. It really sets him closer. Of people because of this entryway that we are willing to say he's worthy of these things and we, we are joining with him and glad to have him joining with us. So let's put this up in the middle and have David chat here and, and uh, mm -hmm. Tom Ryan uh, uh, and we'll ask others to join us as we um, lay hands on him.
being here. Um, this means a lot to me. Yeah, it's been really exciting. I couldn't even have expected some of the words. I don't know, sometimes, I think that's just a testament to the way God works, because sometimes I don't even remember some of the things that happened. Um, and so it's good to hear the way that God has worked through me. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. Uh, thank you all for being here. Try not to leave without giving me a hug. Even you, Phil. No, I'm just kidding. Phil doesn't like hugs. But yeah. So yeah, you're all dismissed. Um, yeah. May the Lord bless you as you go. I just want to put something. On. No, I'm not gonna. No, do, do it. it, do it, do it. No. I'll do it too. I know you will. We gotta bring out that. Wait, we gotta bring out that British All three of us together. Here. Wait, okay. Yeah, sure. Wait, okay. all three of us. What? What's the thing? Oh, it's still recording. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll cut. We'll cut this out. Okay. Yeah. Remember to cut Mike, this out, Mike. Cut, uh, this Mike, out. cut this out. Yeah, cut okay, it out. Okay. Okay. Now, now, now no, start. Okay. Now start. Oh wait. Now start. No. When? <laughs> just do it now. <laughs> We're so proud of you, mate. We want you to keep doing what you're doing. You're awesome. We love you. Five dollars. Bread just for you. Horrible <laughs> bread. <laughs> Not even. Actually, Please, free. sir, can I have some more? <laughs> no, it It'll be free. What a wonderful ending to this ordination. <laughs> your turn, your turn. Get in the I, camera. I don't Get in the camera. Get in the camera. Okay, uh, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's just done. I think it's done now. Wait, Mike's cutting it? I don't know. I'm like, no, no, we can't. Cut it out. <laughs> How do I stop this recording? Do I just press the button again? I have no idea what this I was so saying. This is so weird. I'm still recording. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God.